The San Jose Sharks have spent this offseason acquiring franchise-altering talent. Macklin Celebrini is the new face of the Sharks, and projected to make an immediate NHL impact. He's expected to be at least a Calder Trophy finalist among a stacked rookie class. Ten picks after he was drafted, they landed Sam Dickinson, now the franchise's best D-man prospect. And, as of about a week ago, they filled their final big positional need with Yaroslav Askarov and net. San Jose is positioned for the long term better than any other franchise with superstar potential across the board and quality secondary scorers waiting in the wings. So, in the wake of them acquiring their future superstar pieces, let's take a look towards the future of the San Jose Sharks, the players of the future, and their pathway towards contending for a championship again. This next season is an excellent opportunity for the Sharks to see exactly what they have. Macklin Celebrini and Will Smith are both going to make their NHL debuts. San Jose will have a full season, pressure-free, for them to acclimate to the professional game. If they fall below expectations in their first years, it's no big deal. If they excel, it could very well be impactful enough to move the Sharks' championship timeline forward. To a lesser extent, this applies to surrounding players like Colin Graff or Henry Thrun, who should both get their first full seasons as NHL regulars. While their leashes can't be expected to be as long as those of top 5 draft picks, it's a great time for everyone to prove themselves worthy of being a part of the team's future. Celebrini is obviously at the highest end of the scale, the player with the highest upside of any of the Sharks young players. For projecting how he will perform in his rookie year, there are two excellent comparable players, Adam Fantilli and Jack Eichel. Just like Celebrini, both were Hobie Baker Award winners as freshmen, and all scored at pretty similar rates across their draft years in the NCAA. Following this comparison to the NHL level, Fantilli averaged about 45 points over an 82-game pace as a rookie, while Eichel had 57. A safe, low-end projection for Celebrini would probably be somewhere in that range of 45 to 57 points. However, a couple things will be important to look out for in context of these comparisons. For one, Celebrini is entering the NHL as a better prospect than both of them, not only as a number one pick, but one of the better number one picks over the past decade. But also, Celebrini has a more complete two-way game to him that the other two didn't in their draft years. How ready he is on the defensive end in his first season will also be something to look out for. Will Smith is maybe a little harder to project. In his draft year, he excelled, scoring the second most points in a season in the U.S. National Development Program's history. Moving up to the college level last year, he did one better, stepping in to score the most points in the entire NCAA. Smith did have the benefit of playing with the same line mates he's had for years, and at the NHL level, he doesn't get that luxury anymore. But being the elite playmaker he is, Smith will figure out how to put big numbers up in the NHL eventually, if not immediately. San Jose has put the pieces in place for it to be possible as soon as this season. Celebrini and Smith are insulated in the top six with veteran scorer Tyler Toffoli, who's coming off back-to-back 30-goal seasons. Michael Granlund is another veteran presence, who sneakily had some pretty incredible numbers considering the Sharks team he played on last year. And then, more young talent in William Eklund and Fabian Zetterlund can be expected to occupy top slots on the wing. Compared to other NHL teams, this top six is obviously among the weakest right now. But the makeup of it is pretty good. It's not entirely young players with no veteran experience, and yet, the focus is still fully on the team's young stars. The team is constructed in a way that allows the likes of Celebrini and Smith to succeed, and you can't ask for much more than that. 
Similarly to how the top six revolves around Celebrini, the defensive side of the 2024-25 Sharks is going to live and die by Yaroslav Askarov. Goalies are weird and unpredictable. Even with a high draft pedigree, proper time given to develop in the minors, and great results over the past four seasons, no one can say for certain what Askarov will be at the NHL level. If he's as good as many believe he could become right out of the gate, the Sharks could be the surprise team of the season. If he's anything less than spectacular, then the season likely goes about as people expect. There's no real pressure on Askarov to be incredible this season, however, there is more risk, and the room for the temperature to ramp up just in being a goalie. The Sharks aren't going to be able to shelter Askarov like they potentially could with their young forwards or defensemen. Being a rookie goalie on one of the worst teams in the league means it's almost inevitable that at some point, he is going to get shelled. For what it's worth, the defense should be improved from last season, but ultimately, it'll be on the management and coaching staff to ensure that Askarov gets the most out of his rookie season. These are all the major players that will make an immediate impact this season on the San Jose Sharks. And while if all goes right, these will be the key pieces of a future contender, it's not going to be enough if they don't have depth. Fortunately, the Sharks already have one of the deepest prospect pools in the NHL. Sam Dickinson sits at the top of the Sharks system, the only player in the organization with a number one D-man potential. With defense being the area that the Sharks lack most in their system, they're going to have to depend on him to hit as a prospect. It'll be at least a couple seasons before he's NHL ready though, so the team has plenty of time to develop and prepare him for success. Shakir Mukhamadoulin is another prospect defenseman who is much closer to cracking the NHL. With 34 points in 55 AHL games last season, the 6'4 Russian could very well get a good run of games in with the Sharks this season. Behind Dickinson, their consensus second best prospect is Quinton Musty. Musty slipped to pick number 26 in the deep 2023 draft. He went on to lead the OHL in points per game last season, showing the potential to be a top-tier scorer sometime in the future. Philip Bistet was also drafted with a late first-round pick the year prior. He's played in Sweden up until a short stint with the Barracuda in the AHL last season. His seven points in eight games are a very encouraging sign for the future. Igor Chernyshov was graded as a first-round talent who fell one pick outside that range this year. The 6'3 Russian forward put up some great numbers in the MHL last year. And then there's Kasper Haltonen, the Sharks' second-round pick from 2023. Playing with Sam Dickinson on the London Knights, Dickinson called Haltonen's shot the best he had ever seen. In summary, the Sharks have a deep system, with players in all sorts of different archetypes vying for a place in the team's bright future. Inevitably, some won't work out, but hopefully, some will also exceed beyond their massive potential. In the near future, the expectation is that Macklin Celebrini will be a star, if not superstar, first-line center. Will Smith, William Eklund, and a few of their many forwards will occupy many of the slots in the top six and top nine. Sam Dickinson will be in the team's top four, hopefully shielded by a better supporting cast by the time he arrives, and Yaroslav Askarov will be their starting goalie, a veteran by the point the team is ready to contend. The future of the San Jose Sharks is bright, maybe brighter than any organization across the league but such is the case when a team is just beginning in what's going to be a very long rebuild. The hardest thing to do in the NHL is acquire franchise-level talent, and the Sharks have already gotten about as close as you can get to a certainty in Celebrini. They have players with the potential to rise to that level also, but ultimately, this will be potentially a 5, 6, 
seven-year process. And as good as things seem in this moment, only time will tell how things work out in bringing the Sharks back to within championship range.